Carmela, what are some of your favorite German words? Um, like schnitzel? Uh, no. How about zeitgeist? Uh, probably not. How about schadenfreude? Oh, I, I don't even right. have a favorite. Honey. All right, what about wanderlust? Oh, I didn't know it was a German word. Yeah. What does it mean? It means uh, enjoying travel. Okay, yeah, okay but that. really, how about gewürztemeiner? Ooh, now we're talking. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to the Wine Pair Podcast. I'm Joe, your sommelier of reasonably priced wine, and this is my wife and my wine pairing partner in crime, Carmela. Hi there. And she's German, and we are the Wine Pair. I am so not German. You're not. Why did you just lie like know. that? I don't know. Okay, a quick orientation for those of you who may be new to the podcast. In each episode, we learn about and taste and give our honest review of three wines that are reasonably priced, which means under $20 each, and should be easy for you to find, and are popular. Podcast is made, Carmela, for people who are German, and no, no, not just German, oh. but people who want to learn more about wine and find new wines to enjoy, and just want someone to talk about wine in a fun way that regular old people can understand. Why do they have to be old? They don't. They okay, just have to be good. German. Okay. Oh boy. No, so if that sounds like you, you're in the right place. Hmm. Really, a very strange it's introduction. Weird. It is weird, and we're proud. Everybody to s- just like hit the like stop button. No, we're proud to say that we are recommended by the editors of Decanter Magazine, who call us fun, irreverent, German, nice, <laughs> chatty, and entertaining. You did it! You did it! Good what job! Do you mean? I was because Again, last week you didn't do it. You were supposed to say spooky, hey, and you didn't do it. I don't get a script, so I can't read your mind. I know, mind. but that was like, come on, that was a softball. All right, oh. Carmela, have you asked yourself what the fuck is Gewurztraminer? Well, I have before, but now I know what it is because we've had it before. Okay, but, you know, I frequently frequently ask myself that question. Really? Yeah. And how often have you asked yourself, Carmela, if Riesling and Gewürztraminer are the same thing? Oh, I mean, it keeps me up at night. (laughs) Okay. Well, that's another question that I often have to ponder. I often think about I mean, them. a lot of things keep me up at night, though. <laughs> There's, there are. <laughs> that could be one of them. And one more question, Carmela, okay. for you. Okay. How often do you say to yourself, I really don't want to order or serve Gewürztraminer because, frankly, I'm intimidated or irritated by the name? Well, it's not a fun one to say if you really don't know what you're saying. You're right. So, I, but I don't really judge a wine off of that. Off its name. And did I? Was that what I wasn't supposed to say? <laughs> I don't know what you're supposed to say. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not now sure you got me anymore. Guessing. Okay. T- well, today anyway, we're here to solve and answer those questions and solve those problems because today we're going to talk about just what the fuck this white wine Gewürztraminer is. Do you think I'm going to sleep better tonight? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. Okay. So part of the reason that I want to talk about Gewürz demeanor now, Carmela, mm. other than it's just kind of a fun thing to say. Oktoberfest. Is, well, that, that actually, I didn't even have that on there, but oh, good. That's okay. good. Okay, but, see. But we are, you know, we're going headlong into fall and holiday season is coming and we need to have some wines to share with our listeners that will help them find fun and interesting and good tasting and reasonably priced wines and we're here to see if Gewürz demeanor is just that kind of wine. Okay. Okay. And not quite a spoiler alert, but I do think we're going to find Gewürz Demeanor is a good wine for fall. Oh, okay. I'm excited. She's putting her earring back in. I don't Sorry. know why. And in the fall, we start getting invited to parties and get-togethers, and we start throwing parties and get-togethers, mm. and Gewürz Demeanor can be a good wine to serve or a good gift wine. I think different than trying to say it, it's like trying to get somebody to spell it. Ooh. I mean, I think the saying it part is hard enough. Try it. Sp- try it. I know okay. it's not in the script, but try it. Um. G. Good. U. Nope. E. Yes. V. Nope. U. Nope. I don't know, but I know it probably has a, one of those two dots on top yeah, of Yeah, the some... umlaut. It's G-E-W-U with an umlaut. R-Z-T-R-A-M-I-N-E-R. And actually, that's important because wow. we're going to get to that when we talk about just what this wine is. So okay. hold on to that one. I knew it had to, a little dear two life. dot thing on the top of exactly. one of the Exactly, <laughs> the two dot. We call that an umlaut. Okay. <laughs> okay. For the non-white wine drinker, they may find this wine interesting too because unlike a lot of white wines, it can be higher in alcohol. That's kind of fun. And lower in acidity. Oh. So we're used to white wines being really high in acidity, but it's kind of the opposite. Mm. Like Gewürz demeanor is kind of the opposite. A little more and, oaky? Uh, no, no. Oak doesn't have anything to do with it. It's just the the, the grapes and the style of wine. It's just okay. a, a, a lower acid wine. We'll talk about that in a little bit too. Okay. And then we very rarely talk about sweeter 
or semi-dry wines on our podcast because we just don't, you and I are not big drinkers mm. of sweeter or not, like semi-dry, kind of off-dry wines, mm -hmm. but we should taste them more often because there are people who really do like sweeter wines and Gewürztraminers can go all the way from bone dry to being dessert wine sweet, like those oh. really sweet dessert wines. Wow. And I think we may have an off-dry wine today that oh, we're drinking. Okay. And then while Gewürztraminer may not be as abundant as Chardonnay and Pinot Grigio and Sauvignon Blanc when you're thinking about white wines or even a Riesling, you should be able to find a bottle or two in your local wine shop. I mean, it just shouldn't be that hard. Well, just open good. your eyes and look around. Wow, wow. Is there a German wine section typically? Mm, sometimes. If it's a big wine, like a big wine shop. section, I'll have it. Yeah. But yeah. not um, not in like, you're not going to find it at your local grocery but store. But if there probably. is one, it's going to be like front and center. Yeah, I think so. Okay. I think so. <laughs> and <laughs> you may find that this wine has just been waiting for you to find just it. Just calling if you it yeah. your name. It's just sitting on the shelf and it's saying, drink me. <laughs> exactly. Why won't you choose me? It's kind of like, it's been like... Like the last kid picked for a playground kickball game, which oh, which was wait. never you. You were never the last kid picked. No, I don't think I ever was. But were you? Well, I was never the first kid picked. Let's uh, just put it that I way. Not have been I don't the think first. I was ever the last. But I was kind of like middle to lower middle. Well, that's okay. No, I mean, I, and I was a safe choice. I wasn't a game changer. <laughs> okay, how about that? Well, I was always most inspirational, no matter what I did. You so. <laughs> God. You're the most inspirational in our family. Never the MVP. Never. Uh, I, don't know. I think you're kind of the MVP of the family, too. Hey, that's no, no. so nice. It is. I think but in there's a only five people. <laughs> in a roundabout way, you're trying to compliment me, or I, uh, do I have it all wrong? No, it's it's a backhanded compliment. Okay, but I digress. Uh, in a little bit, we're going to learn more about Gewürztraminer, okay. and we have three different Gewürztraminers to dry. And Why do you have to say it? Like because it's more fun to say that way. Okay. And two of these Gewürztraminers are oh. U.S. wines, and then one is from the Alsace region of France, Gewürztraminer, and we'll give you our honest opinion about them. Why? <laughs> And the printer is starting to print. It's like haunted. Wait, I'm serious. I didn't print anything. Did you? What is it doing? I was like, Holy what is that noise? shit. Like, you started looking around? I did. Because I, I thought it was I'm like, what's going on? Was, the printer started printing, that is ladies bizarre. and gentlemen. We're we, getting towards Halloween and something and That is, is very strange. Okay. Okay. So we're going to talk about all this, these wines and the printer. But you kept saying Gavard's demeanor. That's it. Maybe that's the secret word. Maybe, Maybe it has like a... a Maybe it's a, German. Yes. Maybe our printer is German. Oh, it could be. <laughs> all right. Well, we're going to talk about about that in a little bit but first you got to do our shameless plug oh my god so yeah so first we want to thank you for listening to us and for supporting our show and if you haven't had the chance to do so yet now would be a real good german time to subscribe to our podcast it's free it's free it's a free way to support us what's free in german i don't know but a huge thank you to all of you who have subscribed already and another really great way to support us in german or english is to leave a nice rating and review on our website or an apple podcast or other podcast service so people will go wow mein gott that is a great podcast no that was i went from german to scottish okay <laughs> and then you can also follow us i wouldn't us. have known i know i wouldn't have guessed I, I i i don't know what i'm doing okay uh you can also follow us and see pictures of the wines we're tasting and trying today on instagram come to instagram dm us you know give us a shout out uh it's the wine pair podcast on instagram and then you can contact us or go to our website at the wine pair podcast.com and when you're there you can sign up for our email newsletter wow it is the best newsletter in the world Lucky you. we give you recipes Recipes. We give you wine pairing ideas, like all sorts of great stuff. You'll love it. Once a month, you'll get it. It'll be the best day of the month. Oh, best day ever. That's right. And as we do every week, we'll tell you someone we think you should tell about the Wine Pair Podcast. Oh, boy. This week, we want you to tell someone who has trouble pronouncing words. Okay. And when they mispronounce something, we want you to turn to them and say... You think that's hard to say? Try and say the word Gewürztraminer. No. Yeah, and then you can send them this episode. That's hilarious. So the Wine Pair Podcast said. That's clever. Thank you. I like that. Thanks. I, are you going to like spell it out for them, or are you just going to say Gewürztraminer? Well, or do they have I'm to not going to do it. You're going. They're going to do okay, it. Okay, but I'm people saying, like, should they go? Listening land are going to do it because I think it might be challenging to even like if somebody said try and pronounce this and just had it on a piece of paper. Or like pulled it up on their phone? <laughs> no, you're just going to have them say it. Okay. They don't have to, I mean, you okay. can just say it. All right. Anyway. I just wonder how hard, it, if I saw it, I don't know if I could pronounce it. Okay. What, what I'm going to fall over. I'm Whoa. just going to fall over. Okay. All right. Carmela, let's get back to Gewürztraminer. Okay. Do you have any guesses about where Gewürztraminer is originally from? 
Germany. Well, this answer may surprise you <laughs> oh, a little. Oh, no. really? And to get there, we need to talk about the different names that it goes by. Ah. So Gewurz Demeanor is also known as... That was a trick question. It was a little bit. It's okay. also known as Treminer, Ratklevner, Rousselet, Frencher, Edeltraub, and colloquially as Gewurz. Mm-hmm. So the parent grape of Gewurz Demeanor is a grape called Treminer. Mm. And Treminer is kind of an interesting grape because it has morphed and evolved into different versions over the years. And these different versions have different flavor characteristics and even different colors. Oh. So the Treminer grape is a green skinned grape with a light flavor. And it was thought to have originated in the town of Tramen or Tremeno in the Alto Adige area of Italy. Okay, now, interesting. Alto Adige is a v- in the very northeastern region of Italy that borders ah. on Austria. Or it's not the most, it, it's, it's in that area. Mm-hmm. It borders on Austria. However, now people think that based on genetic testing, that it actually originated in the northeast part of France and or the southeast area of Germany. Okay. So you might be right, but nobody's quite sure. Hmm. Could be Italy, could be France. Could be Germany. Depends on how good the bottle is, right? And who's drinking it. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. If it's going to be somebody's claim to fame or not. Yeah, that's right. And if somebody wants to fight you about it, you just let it go. Let it go. Don't like fight them. frozen. Yeah, ex- let it go. Okay. <laughs> now, the grape is actually related to Pinot Noir, believe it or not. Wow. And then the word Gewürz in German means, any guesses? Mm, giver. I know. I like know. it. I Spicy. Oh. Yeah, so the name Gewürztraminer indicates that this is a spicy... Okay. No, Traminer doesn't mean giver. I know. Okay. It means that it's a spicy version of the Traminer grape. Okay. So remember when we were talking about spelling and all that kind of stuff? Mm-hmm, Gewürz mm-hmm. means spicy and Traminer is the grape. Okay. That's well, actually one grape. But anyway. Mm-hmm. Okay. So now we have some links to some really good articles to on Gewürz Demeanor, which you can find if you go to our website and then you click on this episode and you scroll down to the show notes. But anyway, according to one article... The wine is sometimes considered a love it or hate it wine. Ah, I wonder why. Because it can be a little different than other white wines. Hmm. Some people love it. Some people hate it. Some people are like in the middle. Oh. Just like people are with me. Some people no. love me. Some people hate me. Some people are like, I don't know. If I, don't I, care. I think people pretty much know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they, 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 you're right. There's not a lot of in between. No. There's nobody who's like, Ugh. no, okay. you're very lovable. Oh, <laughs> okay. So the Gewürz demeanor tends to be very aromatic oh. and, and floral. And sometimes people even say kind of soapy in smell. Hmm. And again, it tends to be on the spicy end of things, Gewürz, right? Mm-hmm. And it can also be described as unctuous, mm. kind of thick, mm-hmm. almost syrupy Syrup, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and it can range again as i said from dry like really dry to sweet and again it's often created as a dessert wine and unlike a lot of white wines as i mentioned before it's not very acidic mm. which means it's often not as clean as and refreshing like a lot of like the pinot grigio or the sauvignon blanc mm. often are i wonder how it's going to be with food well i think we're going to talk about that mm. but it's supposed to be good with food but certain types of foods it can also be unlike a lot of white wines medium or bigger bodied mm. and again as i mentioned high in alcohol for a white wine mm. and if it's sweeter on the sweeter end we've mentioned mentioned this before sweeter wines tend to be lower alcohol the drier wines are going to be higher but even so it's usually a higher alcohol wine and then you asked this before but Gewürztraminer does not tend to be oaked okay it's okay. usually fermented in stainless steel or concrete ah. and so concrete is interesting because sometimes concrete can give wines a little bit more of a mouth feel mm-hmm. than stainless steel because the, there's something that goes on it gets in the pores all that kind of stuff and then sometimes it is blended with muscat but most often it is not blended it's okay. just its own damn thing. Hmm. It's like, get out of the way, I'm Gewürz demeanor. Wow. Right? I'm Have spicy. You, yeah, I'm spicy and hot and get out of my Woo! way. Maybe. Okay. We're going to find out. <laughs> and then while it's mostly known for being produced in Alsace, France, mm-hmm. or in Germany, there is quite a bit of Gewürz demeanor grown in the great state of Washington where we are. Yeah. But, you know, that, Lucky us. depending on where you are, it may not be a wine that you find made locally because it's said to be a really tricky grape to grow. Oh. So I didn't, I never knew this I before. I wonder what kind of conditions it needs. Wow. Is it's, that next? I mean, it's like you... Reading your mind. I can't believe it. Yeah. You're amazing. Took the words right out of your mouth. This is why you're the MVP of the family. Oh my God. You're just always like you're there. You're always there. What you're you always on top. me? I feel like there's something you're get, trying to get at tonight. <sighs> 
Hmm. Okay. <laughs> anyway, from what I've read, Carmela, it has the lowest success rate of any good wine grape in the world. And the reason for it is because it's a cool weather grape and it ripens really quickly uh -huh. and it can become really bitter or flabby or overly alcoholic if the grapes are left on the vine for just like one hot day too many. Oh, interesting. And so it's not easy to grow. And this is why, you know, it's difficult. So if you're a winemaker and you want to make easy to grow wines or easy to grow grapes that you can make into wines, mm -hmm. probably not going to choose Gewurztraminer. Mm. So finicky, a little finicky. That's right. It's mm. finicky. And, and because it's cool, it's supposed to be grown in cool weather and not too hot the wines from germany or alsace are supposed to be the best the best versions of them okay. but we're going to find out because we got one from alsace and we got two from washington state okay and you asked about food it's it's said to go well with spicy foods okay and if it's sweet it's going to sound really obvious it should go well with desserts mm -hmm. and one other thing that it's supposed to go well with stinky cheese okay you know the cheese that comes from under your toes? No, no. From under that's cheese. That's not even, that's just <laughs> gross. Yeah, that's right. Okay, and if you are a fan of Riesling mm. or Viognier yeah, or Torontes, you may also be a fan of Gewürztraminer. Okay. But we're going to find out. Mm -hmm. So I think that's enough information about this crazy grape. So should we just learn more about the wines we chose for this episode? I think we should. Okay, because I'm going to go on a little bit of a rant. Why? I'm going to go on a little bit of a rant, Carmela. What's wrong? Well, what here happened? we go. All As usual, all the wines we have chosen for this episode are under $20. Okay, Excellent. That's fine. And all of them should be relatively easy to find because I bought them all at Total Wine. Nice. But that's the problem. Ooh. I've said this before, and I'm going to say it again. I'm kind of getting tired of going to Total Wine. Wow, I hope people, Mr. Total Wine isn't listening. I know, Total, if you're out there, Mr. listen wine, up. Well, Mr. here's the, here's my deal with it. Despite the fact that they have a huge wine selection, they are really, I mean, they have like 8,000, they say they have 8,000 different types or different wines. Okay. Not 8,000 wines, like 8,000 bottles, but like 8,000 different types. wines. Yeah. yeah. Oh so. God. Despite this fact, it's almost overwhelmingly focused on Chardonnay, Pinot Grigio, Sauvignon Blanc, Cabernet Sauvignon, and Bordeaux so the and GSA blend, is just GSM blends. Not yeah. Yeah. wide. Now, if, if you like those wines, that's great. Like mm. more power to you because they're going to have then a lot. You should totally go to Total, total wine. Total wine, exactly. But you know, for a really big wine shop, for a really big wine shop, I would hope they would offer more variety in varietals. Mm. They just, and they don't. It's it's really hard to find. And then they have a lot of these winery direct wines. And I've said this before, I kind of don't know that I trust them that much. Mm. And, you know, they they have what I would consider probably off-brand wines, but they're probably selling at a pretty good profit, like in this mm. winery direct. So yeah. I'm just not sure how much more I'm going to go to them. Wow, I, wow. I, I'll probably will continue to because people do go there. But I, I'm just finding it frustrating. I'm finding it frustrating because yeah. I want to go there. Like maybe they're just you're not very loyal to well, their customers. No, no, no. I think they're very loyal to their customers. I think they... Is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah, no, I think they're very loyal to their customers, I, but in a funny way. But like only to certain customers. Yes. Like when I go... I'm Because I'm trying to do like what the F episodes and find different do, wines. Do they, don't they know that you're visiting don't they know that you're there? Aren't they like, wow, Joe from the Wine Pair podcast <laughs> is here? A lot of times and they we... follow me around. They're like, what do you want? What do you like? Yeah. What do you like? I mean, no, they don't They don't know who I am because I go in a disguise. <laughs> of I wear a mask. Do. I wear a mask. And a hoodie. Yeah, and they're like, and that, that's why they follow me around because I'm in a mask and a hoodie. <laughs> no, <laughs> but anyway. But again, like I went, so I went this weekend. I'm going on a tangent. I'm going on a rant, okay? Really? Wow. So I you went really, in this really weekend are. because I wanted to find a bunch of different varietals Did that I could- Did you just go in there and just yell? I was like, where is the wine? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. No. So I was looking for a few wines. I was looking for a Semillon. I was looking for a Tokai. I was looking for a Verdicchio. I was looking for Radicchio. a Fiano. Not, not Radicchio. These are wines. They're not super common. But if you have 8,000 different wines in a wine shop, you'd think that you'd have some variety of those wines. You would think. But it was super hard to find either any of those wines or more than one or two of those wines. Wow. And so Step it up, I'm kind of feeling wine. like Total Wine sucks a little bit. Oh, my gosh. They suck. They suck. Okay, you're not going to hashtag them. No, I'm not. No, I, I'm being harsh. I'm kind you're, of a jerk, and just, I am that way. No, and, no, And no, if you like Total Wine, I'm, I am sorry. Like, it's fine. I don't... This is not to judge on you. Well, how is you it if you like Total Wine, like, I like you. If there's 8,000 types at Total Wine... I'm just wine, getting frustrated. Then how many types are there on Wine.com? 
Well, there's tons more on wine.com because they don't have to have a physical like store, yeah. but they tend to have a better representation of different types of varietals. Mm. And I, that makes sense. You know, I mean, it's yeah. an online wine shop and they can do lots of things. I just, I just always go in with super high hopes into Total Wine that I'm going to find rare or harder to find wines and, and you can't, and it's fine. They're a big store. They're trying to cater to the palate of Americans or the sure. people that are, that's totally fine. Yeah. It's totally fine. They've probably done their own research on what is being, what is to- selling. Yeah. They're not dummies. No. They're, they're trying to make money. Right. They're not trying to like help Joe Cater. at the wine pair podcast. <laughs> so I get it. I'm just, you know, I'm a baby. I'm a baby. Wham, I'm a baby. Wham. Yeah. I'm a baby. No, so yeah. take what I say with a grain of salt. I'm not judging you. If you like total wine, go for it. Uh-huh. I love it. Now you're like backpedaling on no, it. I'm not backpedaling. I just, for my purposes, they're not fulfilling my purposes. Okay, and you're just giving people a heads up. Like, you just may not find what you want there. Yeah, well, that I may not find what I you want You may there. not find what Joe, Joe wants, wants there. there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, back to our wines. I'm sorry for the rant. So the first wine we're going to drink is the Chateau Saint-Michel Gewürztraminer, and it comes right from right here in Washington State. Mm. And I've said this many times, but I find Chateau Saint-Michel to be a winemaker that makes really reliable and really steady wines for a mass-produced winemaker. Mm. Like, their wines are they are not stunning very often, but they're solid. Consistent. They're consistent. They're solid. They're not overdone. They're kind of like, they're kind of mellow. Mm. I, I like them. Okay. I tend to find them smooth. And we'll see what we think of this one. And I also feel like this, this is a wine that my Uncle John used to drink. Like, really? Like, there were only a couple of people in my mom's side of the family that drank. And Uncle John, he'd have a nice little glass Just of white wine, though. Yeah. Did he have red wine sometimes? Not as often. I didn't not, know this about often. your Uncle John. Yeah. Huh. He was a cook. He was a, he was a baker. He liked to make oh, pies. Oh, I knew all that. Yeah, but and he huh? liked a what little glass of wine. Aunt yeah, she liked what she would drink whatever she white have a wine. Uh, sure, if you gave mm, it to her. Yeah. Okay. Now there wasn't a ton of information on this wine, uh, but overwhelmingly reviews talk about how it's spicy and would go well with Thai food, which may be what we're having tonight. Mm. And um, in a few weeks, I do want to do an episode on wines that go well with Thai food. So that would be kind of fun. <sighs> that would be really. And I'm going to give you a little hint, Carmela. Too. Okay. So we're going to try something that we haven't tried before. It's kind of an accident, but I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Oh, man. We've actually had this Chateau Saint-Michel Gewürztraminer before on an episode. And so I want to see (gasps) if we judge it the same, if we taste it the same. I'm really curious about it. Now you're testing us. Yes, I'm testing the test of us. Wow. Testing. What's quality control? I mean, it's kind of a little bit of... It's like, like, are we full of shit or not? Oh, my God. Right? How did... Why did you... You should have waited. You should have waited. I thought about it, but it's more enticing now. Don't you oh, want to listen? No. I want to listen. I need a minute. I need, I want... need to rewind. <laughs> no, I want I, I want to listen. listen. I want to find out if these guys are full of crap or not. And I'm talking about me. I I mean, you are talking about us. <laughs> okay. Holy cow. All right. No. Okay. So the next one we're going to taste and review is also from the great state of Washington. And it's called Be Lovely Gewürztraminer. And in researching the wine, I found out something that I'm really going to have to try hard to get over. Hmm. It's back about this total wine thing. It okay. turns out that Precept Wine is in Seattle and they created this brand for total wine. Okay. It's a, it, it, they call the wine a winery direct wine, mm-hmm. but it's actually a private label wine. They should just oh. call it total wine wine. Mm. Okay. Precept Wine, by the way, is big. They are the largest privately held wine producer in the Pacific Northwest, and they are a top 12 American wine producer. And they are located, as I said, they're located here in Seattle. And even more, they represent some American brands that I like and that people will know, like Gruet. And they have other brands like Waterbrook, Brown with an E, Brown Family Vineyards, Canoe Ridge Vineyard, and House Wine. You know, so the, the cans right. of House Wine. Mm-hmm. They, Precept makes those. Oh, wow. So I never knew that. I never did either. Uh, but because this is a private label wine, there's almost nothing I can find out about it, uh, including how it's made. So I'm going to change the subject and go to our third wine. Okay. How about that? The last wine we're going to try is called Arthur Metz Vinda Alsace Gewürztraminer, which, as you would guess, is from... Alsace. Nice, in France. <laughs> and it is another winery direct wine, okay? Okay. There you go. Holy hell. My okay, this goodness. wine is also made by a large conglomerate of multiple wine brands, but this one is in France, and the wine conglomerate is, or the wine brand is called Le Grand Chai de France. But anyway, so I don't know why I pronounced it that way and why I'm really telling you that. But I think at Total Wine, you're going to get a lot of mass-produced wines that 
I'm not sure are the best expressions of wine, but we're going to find out. We're oh, going to find out. We okay. Are. Uh, it's a wine that's pretty high in alcohol for a white wine. It's 13%. And this is the one I was talking about. It's considered off dry. Ah, so okay. it could or semi sweet, which right. is really interesting because it's high alcohol at thirteen percent and it's off dry. Huh. So this will be really interesting. Okay. So I think that's enough information. I have been whining and complaining and ranting. I just don't want to like you know push any of your buttons. <laughs> yes. I well, the, I mean the printer is I'm, like I don't get know. over it, buddy. Maybe you haven't said that word in a while. Maybe you say the name of the wine again and Gewurz demeanor. Okay, I don't mm-hmm. know. And on that note, I think that's enough information, enough whining, enough crying, enough ranting from me, Carmela. Uh Get over yourself, right, buddy? Right, just, you know, (laughs) live a little. So let's drink some wine. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. And if you have this wine, you can drink along with us. And you can get any white wine, but especially a Gewurz demeanor. And you can get participation points. Woo! Okay, we are back, and we are ready to try our first wine. This is the Chateau Saint-Michel Gewürztraminer mm. from the great state of Washington in the Columbia Valley. This is a 2021. It is $9, it was $9.97 at Total Wine. Okay. It's 12% alcohol, and as far as I know, it's 100% Gewürztraminer. Wow. And what are you doing? You're like going through your notes? <laughs> I'm no, just, you can't is this cheat. Test? No. Did you look back and you like are gonna okay, nail Jess, it? Okay, what are you smelling? Hmm. I feel like it's a test for me. It is You're a test for me. you. It is a test. Okay, I'm smelling a little peach. Okay, I, I I am too. I'm getting a little peach, but I am getting apple. It definitely apple. Maybe even a little pear. Like it's a little mm-hmm. bit of a less tart apple. Mm-hmm. And I'm getting a little spice on it. Yeah. I am getting a little spice on it. Mm. Like a little okay. cinnamon or something. We're just going to say everything. Yeah. <laughs> so we don't get yeah. anything wrong. But don't you smell a little bit yeah. of that? A little cinnamon? So more of the baking spices rather mm-hmm. than like a Totally black baking. Yeah. yeah mm-hmm. Totally baking spices. Kind of like it. It is almost kind of warm like an apple crisp. It does have kind of a warm smell. Mm-hmm. It has kind of a warm smell. And it kind of smells a little thick. I hate to mm. say it. It's got a little sweetness on it, but it kind of smells. It's kind of smelly. No, it's good. Okay. Let's taste it and see what we think. Okay. It is thick. And it's a little sweet. It's sweet, Mm -hmm. and it's got some spice on it. Mm. It does have spice. I'm getting, like, maybe a little bit of peach, but I'm getting more like apple juice or apple, you know. Martinelli's apple cider? No, no, no. Like apple, like one of those apple juice boxes. Like really sweet ones. Mm. You know, used to have, or maybe those little cans, those little cans. Yeah, the little little treetop apple juice. And those are kind of filmy or thick, kind Mm -hmm. of have that same um, feel, Mm mouthfeel. It is a thicker mouthfeel. It does, it lingers a little bit, but it's not like, um, it's not cloying. It's like, no. it's not super dupery sweet, but it's sweet. Yeah, like, it's, it's sweet. definitely not what we typically drink. No, no. But it's it's a fall wine. Yeah. I mean, don't you think it's a fall or For winter sure. wine? It's almost like a comfort food wine. Totally. I mean, I, 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 white wine might be f- a little unusual to say something like that, but it does feel like you can have this, even though it's cool, mm-hmm. it's not like, I mean, it's a cool down wine, but it feels like in front of a warm fire drinking this Gewurz demeanor. And actually, I kind of feel in a way, maybe it's too cold. Mm. I almost wonder if, because it, it came out, it's fridge cold. Mm. And I kind of feel like maybe if it warmed up a little bit, you might get more of that spice and The pie, flavors might like, come through yeah, a more little of bit. It, like, mm. Yeah, yeah, more it, intensely or something. I think so. Mm-hmm. It is giving me a little bit of an apple pie filling vibe now. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. the inside, you know what it kind of reminds me of? The inside of a hostess apple pie, Ooh, which I like really little, liked when um, I was a kid. What are those called? Hostess apple pies. Oh, true. <laughs> That's what they were God. called. No, but they're called like um, hand pies. <laughs> you call them hand pies, but they're just hostess <laughs> apple pies. Or maybe Pocket the inside pies. of, how about the inside of a McDonald's apple pie? Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm like envisioning in my okay. head. Okay. Which, by the way, if you, you can actually really badly burn the inside of your mouth Ooh. from a McDonald's apple pie. Okay. You gotta be careful. What food would you eat with this wine? Wow, that was just really weird. <laughs> I don't know what this is doing to you, but but I can see this with spicy food mm-hmm. for sure. But I can also see this, and maybe it's the whole fall aspect. I could see it with like um, a squash soup mm-hmm. or something like stewy, mm-hmm. um, but don't but like think- a like a not like a heavy red meat. Stew, no, but- I think it's more of a white wine. 
Like I'm thinking more chicken. That's, I'm thinking yeah. more like, you know, or like, like a, a corn baked, chowder. Ooh, a corn chowder would be good, but like a baked chicken, like a lemony baked chicken ah, or mm-hmm. or turkey would be good. Turkey, I think it's a good Thanksgiving, yeah, Thanksgiving wine. It would be mm-hmm. nice too. Yeah. I but think to me, so. it's like sit by the fire with a nice cool glass of this wine and it'll warm you up kind of, even though it's a cold wine, it kind of warm you and up. And I think this is also a wine you can just have alone. I mean, not by yourself. Mean? Yeah, I was going to say, drink by yourself. You know, if you're feeling you down one day, alone. just crack open a no. bottle of Gewurztraminer you... and just drown your sorrows. Wow. Okay, we are not condoning that at no. all. In fact, you might need to talk to somebody if that's the case. But wow. okay. <laughs> all of a sudden seriousness. I know. No, God. but I'm saying like, this is just a nice glass of wine to have without any food, just to kind of enjoy by the fire, like you said. By like yourself. All, even like an end of the night. Mm, uh, a nightcap. A nightcap. Okay. Glass of wine. I like it. Hmm. So we're going to rate it, Carmela. As a reminder on our rating scale, ladies and gentlemen, we rate on a scale of 1 to 10 where 7 and above means we're going to buy it. And a 4 below means we're going to pour it down the sink. And a 5 or a 6 is like, mm, menza menza. Oh. I'll probably finish it. I'm not sure I'm going to buy it, but I don't, I'm not offended by it. One rating might you give this wine, Carmelita. Okay, so tonight. And no halvesies, only whole numbers. Okay. So tonight, I know I've rated this one before, so we're going to find out. Mm-hmm. Um, and I wish I could drink the other ones too. I feel like, I feel like I'm going to give it a seven. Yeah. I'm, I, that's what I, I feel like I'm giving a seven. It's solid wine. Mm-hmm. I'm enjoying it. I would buy it. I would serve it. Thanksgiving, totally buying this wine. It's ah. fun. You have people who like want, you know, like coming over, I think during a winter or fall party, total crowd pleaser. So mm, I'm giving mm. it a seven. You know, I could go up to an eight, but I'm, wow. I'm giving it a seven. Okay. I like it. I like it. It's a different style than we usually drink. Yes. I mean, I but it's that's nice. Key. Like it's kind of fun to change it up. This is a great change up wine. Okay. If, don't you think? I do. Hmm. Do you want to hear what we said last time? Oh, my God, you're going to do it now? Spiced apple, clove, nutmeg, cinnamon, apple pie, honeydew melon, uh, honey crisp apple. Um, and then the food was Thanksgiving dinner oh. with dessert. And then we gave it, we both gave it an eight. Wow. So there you go. I don't think we got quite as much spice this time. And I kind of feel like it's because it's so cold. Okay, let me ask you this. Okay. What can you tell uh, in order, like which wine, which one this was that night? Was I, it? I, I don't have that information. I wonder. Because, see, you know, sometimes it can change your, you know, our Your opinions. point of view. That's right. Right. All right. Well, we're going to take a break and we're going to try our next Give It to Mina. All right. <laughs> Okay, we are back and we are ready to try our next wine. This is the B Lovely Gewürztraminer. It's from Washington. It doesn't say where from in Washington. It's just Washington. This is a Walla 20... Walla. Oh, well, no, like... that's where it's made, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's where the grapes are oh. from. Uh, 2022 is the year. It was $13.99 at Total Wine, 11.5% alcohol. So this is the lowest alcohol of the group. And as far as we know, it's 100% Gewürztraminer. But Carmela... What are you smelling on this Gewurz Traminer? Hmm. This has that gassy yeah. kind of smell, that kerosene. Sometimes you get that on these types of wines. Mm-hmm. But usually those are more like in the ones that are from Alsace. But I'm getting a little bit of that. A little bit, yeah. I'm getting a... This is going to be kind of weird to get this too, but it's a little flower, flowery to mm-hmm. me. Just mm-hmm. a touch. I do... I'm getting the gas, so that doesn't... Or, you know, it doesn't make a lot of sense, but there's a, maybe it's the sweetness on it that I'm also smelling a little bit too. Yeah, I'm getting, the more I swirl it, the more I'm getting that, that almost glue, like airplane glue. Oh, wow. Kind of smell. Okay. Glue and flowers. Hmm. But I, I also am getting a little soapiness, like a little maybe hand that's soap, what a little I'm hand getting. soap, like, yeah. the, like you're squeezed, just pump that hand soap. Hmm. It's kind of, again, thick smelling, but it's not as apple-y or as fruity fruity as the last one at all. Mm -mm. This is much more, I don't know the right way to say it, but much, I think the flowers is right. Yeah, it's not, it's it's a little more artificial. Hmm, that's interesting. I don't know. I wouldn't have said that. Really? I like it. I don't know. Okay, Okay. we're going to go for it. All right, let's try it. Ooh, sweet. It's real sweet. It tastes different than I thought it would taste. So different than how it smells. It's but very sweet. It's still kind of rosy to me or something. A little bit, although I'm getting more like peach, but okay. like but 
like canned peach juice. Oh, that's what okay. I'm. That's what I'm getting. That fruit cocktail juice. You know when you get a fruit mm-hmm. cocktail in the can that Del and Monte or whatever. Down the, yeah, and yeah. it's so good, and you're mm-hmm. just it's like four million calories, and Ooh, it's so good. Oh my god! And you're so, like, oh, I'm having a serving of fruit. Fruit. I'm getting my fruit <laughs> in today, and you don't even know kind of what fruits they are exactly. I mean, the grapes, and you know. And all of a sudden, there's something like really red yeah. in it. Like, well, I think it's a maraschino cherry or something. Like oh, they just oh. put fruit in there. Like I don't even know what fruit it is. Mm. Again, except the grape. Yeah, it's very. I I don't know. Like this is. I might get tired of this. It's a little bit too sweet for me. It's very sweet. It's too sweet for me too. There is something interesting in the taste. There, I'm t- getting that kind of like cinnamon or clove. I'm getting that spiciness in there. I'm getting a little bit of like um, a little bitter though too. Mm-hmm. Just a hint of bitterness. And I don't know if it's like um, something unripe, like an unripe fruit taste, or there's just like something bitter. You know what it tastes like? You you open up that Del Monte fruit can, and you got a little taste of the can. Oh, I wasn't <laughs> you know going I, down that you road. Know what I mean? But maybe. You got a little taste of that tin mm. in there. It's it's thick. Like, this is an interesting one. I feel like I want to roll it around in my mouth. Yeah. I don't know how to explain it, but... It might give me a little bit of a stomachache. Mm. I mean, just because I'm not so used to drinking. Is this, can they ever, do they ever give you the sugar content for wines? I'm sure we could. It's probably on the bottle. By the way, the bottle is beautiful. It's, it's so a really pretty. pretty. All of the wines that we're trying, you'll see them if you go to our Instagram, but they're all these tall, and you know what, thin, I, oh. hold on. They're all these tall, thin, like all sauce kind of looking bottles. They're beautiful. And the, and the label, this one is really pretty. It's baby blue. It's really nice. It's so ahead. pretty. And it's like, it's definitely like has some themes behind it or you know it's okay so on the back it says be lovely now it's b just the letter lovely but there is a b on it a b e e b and then it says be sincere be generous be gracious be lovely there you go that's so what else do you want i love it okay now as i'm tasting <laughs> this Sorry. totally changes the subject hmm. so i'm tasting this a little bit more i'm getting a little bit of honey i feel like i'm getting a little bit of honey yeah, I guess a little bit of honey. Yeah, because there is a little bit of a bitterness to honey, too. I think. Yeah, there's some sort of mm, tropical fruity kind of taste to it, a little bit. Don't you think? pineapple Kind of. There's something, yeah, there's something in there. Hmm. Like in the fruit cocktail, when you open up that can of Del Monte fruit cocktail, there's a piece of pineapple in there. Okay. It's super washed out. It doesn't kind of even taking look... on the taste of the other fruit. Yeah. It's, yeah. But it's like, it's there, because that's where you get a little bit of that bitterness too sometimes mm-hmm. like if it's really like acidic or whatever that pineapple so i'm getting a little bit of maybe pineapple okay okay what would you rate or no what food would we pair with this lovely be lovely gewurz tomato you know again i think you want something kind of big i think you want something spicy with this yeah or you know? fried i think or you fried, want french yeah, so, fries because you really got to cut the sweetness it's really sweet. I'm kind of I'm kind of thinking like buffalo wild wings, like buffalo wings. Wow. Okay. Like something really spicy. Yeah. Really spicy yeah. and to like cut into this. Get your fingers really dirty with Yeah. It. Yeah. And then get them all over the glass. Like you get the buffalo wings and fries, I think, this, and blue cheese. Like this is going to go really well. I could see this. You know, they said stinky cheese. Mm. I could see this going with a stinky, like Actually, a, a I blue think, cheese. I th- or gorgonzola. I think that. You're right. I think you're hitting the nail on the head because this is so oh, sweet oh. that you do need something bold with it. Yeah. Because if not, I just don't know if, totally. if you're going to finish it. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, blue cheese. Like, like a nice charcuterie board, like a blue cheese and a really rindy kind mm. of like cheese would be good with some crackers. Hard or soft or bold. Crackers <laughs> <laughs> or cheese. Soggy crackers. No, cheese. I don't, I don't know, like blue cheese. You Salty. Know? Salty. Yeah. Okay. All what right. about like potato chips? Sure. I think sure. you can. Sure. Popcorn. Yeah. I think spicy potato chips, like Ooh. barbecue chips or oh. like a, you know, hot, a hot taki chip would taste good. Okay. All right. What uh, rating would you give this Buena Carmela? Uh, well, again, it has to be the right circumstances for me to really probably enjoy this. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to give this... I'm like a six by mom. I'm verging on a five. Yeah. I think I'm going to give it a six as well. I'm with you. It's kind of tasty. It is tasty. Like I think on first taste, you're like, damn, this is good. Like it's sweet. It's nice. If somebody likes sweet wine. They're going to love this yes. wine. And I think like, but I, I, it would be hard for me to drink a lot of it. And I agree. I'm getting a teeny tiny bit of a tummy ache. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I'm almost, so sweet. for me, I'm almost verging on a five. Well, just, you can change. You want to change it to a five? Well, let's just see how we do with the next one. But right. I just, yeah, it's just really sweet for me. Okay. Well, on that note, we're going to take a break and we're going to try it. I last one. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, we are back and we are ready to try our last wine. This is the Arthur Metz Vindal Sauce Gewürztraminer. It's from Alsace, France. The year its vintage is, I don't know why I said that really weird, 2021. It was $19.99 at total wine, 13% alcohol, 100% Gewürztraminer, another beautiful tall bottle. And like the Be Lovely, not just a beautiful tall bottle, but a screw cap. Woo! And then all of these wines have been nice and light colored. Yeah, this very, one's a little darker. A little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, but Carmela, what are you smelling on this wine? Well, this one, it's the same, you were mentioning this too, that same kind of gluey. Mm -hmm. um, a little bit of that gasoline smell, especially when you swirl it. I think it's gluey, but to me, it's a little bit more almost tree. Like it's, there's almost oh, a natural sap, like sappy, sap. yeah, like I'm outside and I'm smelling a tree, you yeah, know, don't you smell true. trees? Like yeah. it's got that gluey smell, but it's more natural to me. It's more natural smelling. Well, and it's funny you say tree. It almost smells like outdoors. It does. Like, like, it almost has a pine mm -hmm, pine smell to mm -hmm. it. Which is kind of, I don't know. I mean, it's a funny thing. Does anybody know what that, like if you go into New York City and you go outside, there's a whole different oh, outdoor smell. it doesn't smell, smell like pine. No. It smells like poop. No. Ooh. But yeah, so we're thinking more foresty, <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm thinking. This definitely has similar smell to the last one, but more fruity. It's got a little bit more like apple. Maybe it's got that tropical fruit again, but yeah. I, you, you didn't like the apple. You didn't think the apple. I don't know. I'm just not, I'm not getting you a ton of more fruit peach? on these. I'm getting definitely fruit. Oh, I'm definitely okay. getting fruit on this one. Maybe it is peach too or apricot or something. Stone fruit. It does smell like syrupy to me. Again, like, you know, kind of like that, ju the juice from the little dole fruit cans or whatever. It's a little, it's a little syrupy again. This is, you know, they've, they've talked about the wines as aromatic. This is aromatic. It does have a little flowery kind of smell to it mm -hmm. too, but not... It's a, it's like white flowers. It's like a soft flower. Okay, let's try it and see what we think. You didn't like that. Wow. Ooh, there's lots going on. This one tastes soapy to me. Tastes soapy. It it's tastes like of, um. Again, it's bitter. It's bitter at the end, but to me, it tastes like what you think a flowery, a uh, fruity, flowery soap would taste like. It does. It's got really? kind of that filmy, soapy yeah, yeah. kind of taste in it, like. You were taking a shower and you accidentally got some soap in your mouth. Ooh. It's like, you know what I mean? It's got a that soapy kind of taste yeah. to it. You're not, are you not agreeing with me or? No, I am. I'm just, there's something on it that I can't. And I, I I'm, it could be kind of like a Marciano cherry juice. Okay. It's spicy. This one is, is spicy. spicy. Mm -hmm. This one has more spice than the other two and a stronger spice. Mm -hmm. Like clove. It's not, it's like, it's almost like a, um, you I know, a vanilla. The vanilla bean plant thing. Oh, you yeah, know? the little, the pod. Strong. It's strong. Or, the pod, yeah. Or it's kind of like, also, like, you smell vanilla, but then you, the extract doesn't okay. taste good. So it's like unsweetened vanilla. Mm -hmm. Kind of? I don't know. I hate to tell you, but I kind of like this one. Oh, wow. Okay. And it's supposed to be off dry. They said it was off dry. It doesn't seem as sweet as the last one. I mean, I'm getting some sweetness on it, but it doesn't seem as sweet no, as the last there's one. There's a little acidity in it or something. Yeah, actually. it's drying out at the back. Yeah. It's super complex. Yeah. Like, there's a lot going on in the glass. Right. Is what I'm feeling Whoa. like. Yeah. No, this is a very, to me, this is a really like interesting wine. It's kind of a different wine. It's not a one note wine. Like every time I taste it, I kind of feel like I'm tasting something it changes different. Changes a little bit. Mm -hmm. And like the last wine, like it has body on it. It's a full bodied wine. Totally. Lots like, again, feel. I feel like I could just roll it around in my mouth, which is very unusual for a white wine. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, it's pretty complex. What food would you have with this? Well, I am i don't know why this is coming to mind, but like a spicy pizza. Mm. Something with like bread, because it is, it's got that those bitter notes to it, too. I think you need something to kind of soak that up. God, there's so much going on in this wine. Every time I taste it, I feel like I'm tasting something different. Mm. I feel like I'm tasting almost like the inside of a mandarin, like, you know, those little uh, cutie oh, right. oranges. I feel mm -hmm. like I'm tasting kind of the rind of it. Okay, like, like the pith? No, but yeah, but, oh, the but I'm still getting, even. The, yeah, but I'm getting like the orange flavor, but mm -hmm. it's like really, there's bitterness on it. Mm. Anyway, I think this was be, this is, this was be. Uh, mm -hmm. spicy Asian food, Thai food. This is a spicy food wine. It's mm -hmm. really nice. Mm -hmm. I, I'm really... You're liking I, it. I like it. I don't know why. I'm just really liking it. Mm -hmm. um, but not because it's like... So the the Saint-Michel is like, sit by the fire, sip it, nice, mellow, enjoy it. The last one, the B Lovely is like, 
have it with dessert. You're, you know, it's like if you like if you have a sweet tooth. This to me is like a like a wine I want to sit and contemplate. Well, I was gonna a say bit. this has a lot of personality. Like yeah. it's kind of that big, per- especially if you've never drank a Gewurztraminer. Like this is a pretty unusual. Probably not something you would. If I don't. Yeah, I don't think I'd start with this one. No, no, and and I don't know if it's a crowd pleaser. Um, I think it depends on the crowd. If you have a wine uh-huh. nerd crowd, they might really like it. Mm. But it's definitely on a sweet end. So if people don't like sweet wines and they're not willing to experiment, I, I don't know that I'd give it to them. Right, right. Well, what what rating would you give this wine, Carmilla? Well, you know, I'm, it's not blowing me away. I'm not like, I think you're enjoying it more than I am. And I, you know what? It's just, a, it's kind of a lot for me. So I feel like I'm going to give it a five. Wow. I know. You're giving it a five, and are you staying with a five on the B Lovely? No, I'm I'm keeping that at, at I mean a six. six. A six. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to keep the B Lovely at a six. I think it's overrated, but I'm giving this an eight. I, I really, That's I really, amazing. we haven't we haven't been that like dis- disparate That's in huge. our ratings in a while. Yeah, that's I'm, big. I just think this is a fascinating wine. I'm not even wow. sure how good it is. I just think it's really fascinating. Well, it no, is I think pretty it's really unusual. Good. And I mean, when you're stacking it up against the other two, it's definitely, like I said, it's got a much bigger personality. T- totally. Like me. It's got a much bigger personality. It's not wow. It's not nice and, you know, lovely like the, like the, the like B you, lovely. The, the Chateau Saint-Michel. Oh, boring, huh? Okay. Be no, boring. I didn't say boring. I, didn't say that, boring. I, said, I said, you know, just not offensive. Okay. Oh. But Carmela, <laughs> which of these wines are you finishing tonight? I'm going to go with the Chateau Saint Michel. Oh boy, and somebody's calling her. Oh, it's nice. our daughter. She's oh, okay. FaceTiming no, us. No, not yet. You, you can't. Okay, an- I you can't answer it. Okay. Later. Okay. okay. So. Oh, sorry. Really, really. Okay, Mariana, we'll talk to you in a minute. Okay, so let's talk about the taste profiles expected from Gewurz demeanor. Okay. You really want to answer that? You did answer the phone. I didn't. Oh, okay. Uh, the grape grind says pineapple, mango, passion fruit, so a lot of tropical fruit, peach, pear, rose, potpourri, tea, cinnamon, clove, allspice, that's a good one, Mm. wet rock, and sometimes soap notes. The fruit in the wine is very ripe, sometimes smelling like canned fruit. Oh my gosh! You hit the nail on the head. Okay, Chateau Saint-Michel Gewürztraminer. The winery says fruit and clove spice... Pear and tangerine flavors. Okay, yeah. Light sweetness. And then another one says aromatic and spicy wine, rich, unctuous, fruit cocktail, Mm. jasmine, and clove spice. Okay, not bad. The Bee Lovely. The winery says lychee, which I don't know what that is. I know it's a fruit, but Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. Pear and spice. Uh, Tropical fruit, honeysuckle flavors, light baking spice notes. Northwest Cellars says rose, lychee, ripe yellow apple, some caramel, and grapefruit pith. A uh-huh. hint of apricot nectar uh, with spice cake and orange on it. Hmm. And then Arthur Metz, the winery says, spicy notes of cinnamon and Asian five spice linger in the nose. Apple pie and peach notes pair well with Asian stir fries. There you go. Okay. Uh, the wine kitchen says, uh, aromas of flowers, lychee, and passion fruit, uh, floral and spicy notes, full bodied and well structured. So there you go. Okay. So not car- bad. You, you know, we were getting some of that. We weren't getting lychee because I don't know what it tastes. Do you know what a lychee tastes like? Well, I don't. I actually don't I really can't, know. Either. Yeah. I mean, I think I've had some things flavored with lychee, but I couldn't tell you really what it tastes like. Yeah. So that's a hard one. Mm. But I like these Asian five spice. Mm-hmm. The all spice was really good. I was uh, getting some of that. Yeah. And, the, and I think they confirmed that some of them have that little bit of bitter, like the grapefruit. Grapefruit. Hit. Yeah. And, and one said like tangerine. I I was yes. getting that yep. kind of flavor in one of them. So mm-hmm. anyway, so, okay, Carmela, what's the verdict on Gewurz demeanor? Okay, I really, I do like it. I mean, I do, I don't know if it's going to like outdo any every of day. my favorites. Yeah, exactly. Day. And uh, you don't need a lot of it just because it's extra. I mean, for me, it's quite sweet. Quite. So it's quite different from what I'm accustomed to, but a fun one to try. You got to try it. You yeah, got to try it. And should, for special occasions, like, again, a Thanksgiving dinner, I think it's fall, a great choice. It feels warm. Yeah. Like a warm choice. I think it it, it would be fun. Super fun. Yeah. All right. Well, Carmela, it's time for us to go. But before we do, we want to thank you very much for listening to us. And if you haven't done so yet, like right now, like press that button and right. subscribe, right? And then leave us a nice rating and review. Like say something. Be like, these guys are you amazing. See something, say, say something. Say something. They be lovely. You can call us. Oh, be lovely oh, on there. Right. That's a free way to support us and help us grow listeners. So come on, people. Hmm. Uh, and then we'd love to hear from you. So you can visit us and message us at our website at the winepairpodcast.com and you can join our email news 
newsletter there. Woo. And you can just email me and Carmela, but I will answer it most of the time, at joe at thewinepairpodcast.com. And you can tell us about something that you want us to try or something you're curious about or what you're drinking or whatever. We love to hear from you. Oh, and, and if then, you need to talk to somebody, talk like if you're drinking alone mm-hmm. a lot. Don't do it. Talk yeah, to us. Just t- or we can like have you talk to somebody else. <laughs> oh, boy. oh, boy. Okay. You can follow us on Instagram and see the pictures of the wines that we're tasting, these beautiful, elegant wines that we're mm-hmm. tasting tonight. And uh, that's about it. So we're going to sign off, and we want to thank you once again. And we'll see you next time, even though we don't actually see you. We, you Can hear you us. we'll hear you next we, time? No, that's weird. Oh. And as we like to say, life is short, so stop drinking shitty German wines. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Auf Wiedersehen. Ciao. Oh. And the happy ending, happy ending.